Kakadosh Boker Tov Mesechet, Sukkah, Daf He Amud Bet, we were saying, and we were going to start today, the Vav Amud Aleph, 6A1. So we were talking about, if you remember the different Shiurim, that they were Doraita. So since the Shiurim were Doraita, right, how do we know that they were Doraita? Because it's written in Pasuk, Eretz Chita Usura, Vegev Enu Tirem Rimon. Eretz Zet Shemen Udvash, which means that we're talking about the the wheat, barley, the grapes, figs, right, pomegranates, right, Eretz Zet Shemen, a land flowing of honey and oil. The Amar of Hanin says of Hanin, Kola Pasuk is the entire Pasuk is our Mashuri, Nehmad, it's written, Chita, and it's written in Baitam Nuga, the Tanambas, it's written in Mishnah, Nikhlasa Baitam Nuga, the Chilav, Al Ketifav. If somebody's going to go in, right? If somebody's going to come and he's going to go to the Baitam Nuga, and which means it has Sarat, and then he's got on his clothing, right? He's got, right? That's what it says here. Chilav Al Ketifav, Sanav, it's a Badovia Do, who went me in Miyad? Everything is going to be immediately impure. Says the Gimara on Vava Mudale, Fayala Bush Kelavis and Nabla, but if he was not that he had it on his shoulders and he was carrying it in, he was Lavushbo, meaning he was actually wearing them, right? So he had his Sandalim Raglav, Tabotov, Sotav, who Tame Miad, it's going to be Tame Miad immediately, right? The hen, now the Bigadim and the Sandalim and Tabotav, Tehorim, Achi Shebich Tehachila Pras, until they're going to be there for Kedachila Pras. Patritin, it has to be wheat. Right, meaning out of wheat bread and not barley bread. Mesav, and he has to eat derech sebat, just like you usually eat. Ve'ochel beliftan, and you're eating it with other things as well. What is seora? Seora is barley. The tzarambas we learned in the Mishnah etzem ki seora metamei b'magav masav v'no metamei be'ol, which means when you have an etzem of the met, right? We're talking about a bone of the deceased person. So as long as it's going to be like a barley bean, that is metamei b'magav masav by touching and carrying it, but it's not going to be metamei be'ohe. Geffen, what is Geffen? Kedir Ravit, Yain La Nazir. Kedir Ravit, it's a Ravit of wine for a Nazir. Te'ena, what is the Te'ena, the fig? Kegro get it, right? It's a dried fig. That is to do the Hotzat Shabbat, which means if somebody is going to take out the dried fig size outside on Shabbat, from one Rishut to another Rishut, he's not going to be Chayam Mita, right? The Nazir or Korban Shogeg. Tetzran, right, as we say, right, because we say that it's unless it's going to be a Gro get it, which is a dried fig, okay? Next, yeah, Rimon, pomegranate. Its name is Winner to the Mishnah, Kol Kele Bale Batim Shuran Krimonim. All the Kelim of Bale Batim, the Shiur to purify from Tuma is Rimon, which means if you have a utensil that became disqualified, it became impure, right? Tameh, in order for it to become pure, you need to have a hole big enough as a pomegranate. If it's a hole big enough as a pomegranate, so now what happens is it becomes Tahor from its Tuma, the, the Tuma ran away from it. Right, because if not, then it still has the name of a kli, and therefore the shiud of the nekiv, right, the shiud of this hole has to be a pomegranate. Okay, eretz zet shemen eretz kol shiurei as kizetim. What does it mean when it says eretz zet shemen? Right, eretz zet shemen. Lo shemata. He says eretz shekol shiurei kizetim. Right, all the shiur is going to be like a kizait. That's what it means. The land that all the shiurei are zetim. Says the Yemena Kol Shiurah Sakadaitah. Haika Hani Damna. What do you mean that all the Shiurim are Kizatim? Look how many other Shiurim we just brought down now. We brought Shiur Kigro Get It. We brought the Shiur of the Etzim Kiseora. We said, well, look at the Geffen was the Revit. Well, everything was Shiur, right? It was Kizai. Elaima Sherov Shiurah Kizatim. The majority of all the Shiurim are going to be Kizai. Dvash. What does it mean, Dvash? Dvash, we're talking about Dvash Tmarim. Not right, dvash of the dates, not the dvash of, of the bumblebees, right? No, one more time, dvash timarim, dates, dates does not say anything else, yeah. Kekotevet, so that's like a kotevet agasa, which is the tomorrow, tomorrow, the big one that's to do with kippur. Because on kippur, if you remember, we just learned this in Yoma, if somebody's going to eat like a kotevet agasa on kippur, that's when he's going to be chayav. So that is the, the size. The measurement for kippur, it's a little bit different than other types of food. Alma, so you see from here, to write on you. So we go back to the original thing. Why did you tell me that it's Allah Chalam Hashem Sinai? It's Doraita, it comes from the Torah. We brought a proof from the Pasuk, right? And this comes from the Torah. So says the Gimana, the Tispira. Are you going to tell me, right, that it's logical to say such a thing? How are you going to tell me that it's logical to say such a thing? He says, Shoot. Is it written in the Torah? 
It's not written in the Torah Ashiu. So he says, Ela, but rather Hilchataninu, Ukra Smachta Balma. You're right. It's Alakal Moshe Misinai. That means all these Shiurim that we just learned in the Gemara is Alakha Le Moshe Misinai. However, though, the Kra is a Smachta Balma. The Pasuk is an Asmachta. What does that mean in the Smachta? Right? It's like a, we base it upon the Pasuk. But really, Behmet, it's not, it's not like that. Okay? Fine. Next, Gimara. Chatzitzin, right? Doraitaninu. We just said one second. You just told me that also Chatzitzin was also a Lachal Moshe Misinai. What is Chatzitzin? A Chatzitza. What's a Chatzitza? Separation. A Pasek. Yeah, an interruption between, Same. right? Same. Uh, between the human body and, let's say, the water of a mikveh. That's called a Pasek, right? It's called a Chatzitza. Yeah, it's Chotzetz. So therefore, what happens is, it's Chatzitzin. You're going to tell me Chatzitzin is a Lachal Moshe Misinai? Why? It's written by a Metzora, which is going to be doing Tevila from his Tara. What does it mean? What does it mean? He has to wash his flesh in the water. There cannot be a Chatzitza between him and the water. So why are you telling me it's a Lachal Moshe Misinai? It's a Pasuk Mefurash in the Torah. Kapish? Yeah? Answers the Gemara. Ki ata yilcheta l'se'aro. No. You know what the Lachal Moshe Misinai is coming to teach you? That there's also chatzitza by the hair. Just like Rabbi Rachana, Rabbi Rachana, Rabbi Rachana, Nima Achat Kishura, Hoseset. Right? Shalosh, Enan Chotzetzot. Shetaim, Enu Yodea. Which means like this. Yeah, imagine right now a person has, right? Or usually we're talking, we're referring to a woman, right? But it could also be a man, let's say, but technically again, it would be a man in this case, right? In the case of Mitzurah or things like that, because, right? But let's say he has, right? And yeah, you, you have a, a hair tied within itself. Nima'achat. So, for example, by men, you can't really take Jamaican, your hair and... Jamaican, what? Jamaican, yeah, Jamaicans or... Yeah. So, what happens? You have a man, he has got a long hair, he comes and he takes one hair and he makes knot within itself. One hair to itself. We're not talking about one with another one. That's one and one. We're talking about one hair, he made a knot in the hair. Is that a chatzitza or not? So, says the Gemara, Nima'achat keshura. Chotzetzet, it's a chatzitza. Shalosh, if it's going to be three tied together, so you took three hairs, you tie them together, it's not a chatzitza. Shtaim en yodea. Two, I don't... Yeah, so it says here, no, so we're going to see, so it says here, that that's why they have to comb their hair, they have to make sure that there's no there's no knots, there's nothing there. Se'aro nami doraita ninu. says one second, the se'aro is also doraita. It says in a pasuk, "Vrachat se besaro b'mayim et." When it says "Vrachat et besaro b'mayim," what does it mean? "Et besaro b'mayim." Et hatafel besaro. When it says the word "et," et was something which is tafel to the basar. Umayni, what is that exactly? Se'aro, right? The se'ar. So says the Gemara, right? So when we say the word "Vrachat et," the "et" is adding the se'ar. So that means besaro b'mayim means the flesh. With the with the water, that's already dine chatzitza. The word et is actually adding in the seara. So you see from here that just like chatzitza, the goof is poselet betvia, betvila. So to the chatzitza, the seara. So again, we have a question. Why are you telling me it's a lachal moshe misnai? It comes from the pasuk. It says berachat et betzoro b'mayim. So betzoro et et et. No, et. Is an additional thing. You're adding something on. No, so if it says ebesaro, what am I going to add? So I'm going to be I'm going to add something which is tafel to basar. What is tafel to the basar? The seyar. The seyar is secondary to the to the flesh. You got the flesh, and then you have the the hair on the flesh. So the when it says verachat ebesaro b'mayim, verachat ebesaro b'mayim comes to teach you that there can be a chatzitza between the body besaro l'mayim, between the flesh and the water. Et besaro, the word et comes to include something which is tafel besaro. What is tafel besaro? The hair. So, therefore, why are you telling me that chatzitza is not doraita? Doraita. Yeah, but chatz et besaro, man. Et comes to include the hair. And so, the Gemara, no, you're right. Kiata yahil chata le director of Yitzchak. The Alechala Moshe Mishnah is coming to Aaron like a Yitzchak. Tamara be his heart. It says a be his heart. Yeah, Vava Muvet. It says over here, yeah, 6b. Devar Torah, yeah, Allah, right? Devar Torah, Mina Torah, Rubo Makpid Alav Hoses, 
שאין לו מקפיד עליו, אין לו חוסף. Yeah, meaning מן התורה, the only time when it's going to be מקפיד, is if you have on the majority of the body a chatzitza. But if you do not have, right, not only the majority of the body, majority of the body and מקפיד עליו. רובו הוא מקפיד. Meaning, you, it's not just, imagine a person has a little tiny thing here. What? Exactly. Makpid means you're a makpid. You don't want it to be there. So it has to be on the majority of the body plus makpid. Right? That, you, that you're a makpid on it. You don't want it to be there. So therefore, again, rubo makpid is chotzet. Eno makpid, eno chotzet. That means even if you have a chatzitah, the majority of your body, if you're not makpid on the chatzitah there, it's not a chatzitah. You know, no, it's, it's like a... a the nails and everything. We'll, we'll yeah. see. No, because usually the nails in itself is not a chatzitah. According to Sfaradim, the nail in itself is not a chatzitah. According to Ashkenazim, it is. Right? That, but still, the, the minhag was to come. The nail polish is not a chatzitah because, first of all, it's on the minority of the body and she wants it to be there. Yeah, exactly. It's the opposite. The opposite of this. Yes, a painter. We're going to speak about it. Yeah, then it's a problem. Yes. Yeah? Then it says, we're what? Tattoo is not a chatzitah. Tattoo is inside the flesh. Right? But uh, it's another thing. So it says here, Vegazru al rubo sheno makpid mishum rubo makpid. Yeah, you guys listening? It says here, they made a gezera on the majority of the body which you're not makpid because of rubo makpid. Ve'al miyuto makpid mishum rubo makpid. And then the miyut which is makpid because of rubo makpid, which means like this. Mina Torah, you need double negatives. Double negatives means you're makpid and the majority of the body. Midra banan, we added on the two next steps. We added on the minority of the body, right? Minority of the body, even though, right? Sorry, the minority of the body, which you're going to be makpid, or majority of the body when you're not makpid. That means either or. Meaning, mina Torah, you needed both. Makpid plus majority of the body. Midra banan, either or. Either minority of the body, but you're makpid, or majority of the body, and you're not makpid. Either or. Okay? So, ask the Gemara, one second. So why don't I already make a decree on the double negative as well? Veligzer nami al miuto sheno makpid, mishum miuto makpid, right? Inami mishum rubo sheno makpid. Why don't I also make it on the minority and I'm not makpid? So that's the double of the other way around. Why? Because of miuto makpid or because of rov sheno makpid. So answers the Gemara. He gufa gezera ve ana nekum ve nigzar gezera gezera. That in itself was already a drabanan of a gezera, and I'm going to come. I'm going to do. One gizera, another gizera. Meaning, one more time. Mina Torah. Yeah, Mina Torah. For it to be a chasisa, when is it a chasisa? Two conditions. Majority and makpid. Midra banan, in order to be a chasisa. When is it? Minority and your not makpid or majority and Sorry, the opposite. No, Ma- minority and you are makpid, or majority and you're not makpid. That is midra banan. The Gemara asks, one second, why don't I do the double negative, minority and not makpid? Why? Just like minority and you are makpid, or the majority and you're not makpid, right? It should make like zira. So says the Gemara, that's like zira, like zira. That's a decree to another decree. It's too far removed. Meaning it was already enough to make one of them. But I can't do the double negative. It's too far removed. Because then it's like two steps removed. I don't do that. Okay? We don't do that. Okay? So says the Gimana, Mechitzin. So when we spoke about the Mechitza, which is Allah Moshe Misinai, had the Amran. Yeah? Yakut. Yeah. Okay. Baruch Hashem. Yeah? So he says, had the Amran. It's what we said before. So Hani Chal Rabbi Yehuda. This is good according to Rabbi Yehuda. Right, that Rabbi Yehuda says that you cannot learn the, from this halakha from the Aron and the Kaporet. And therefore, you needed halakha la Moshe Sinai. But according to Rabbi Mi'in, that he's learning it from the Aron and the Kaporet, Ma'ika Lameimah. Right, which halakha is this has to do with the Mechitzot Mina Torah? And it doesn't have the, a, a Mekor from the Pasuk from only from halakha la Moshe Sinai. Right, but you're learning it from the Aron and the Kaporet. Aron and the Kaporet, the Kaporet was one tefach, the Aron was nine, which is ten. Learn from here, the Mechitzot need to be ten. Yeah, that's it. So the mechitzot, this mechitzin that we just mentioned, which was halachal Moshe Misnai, according to Rabbi Meir, we learn it from the Kaporet and the Aron. So according to him, why do I need this halachal uh, Moshe Misnai? I learn it from the Pasuk. So answers the Gemara, ki atai hilchata, when is halachal Moshe Misnai according to Rabbi Meir? Legud. Right, which is basically to do with good or lavud 
or dofen akuma, which means like this. There are three different talachot, right? We already mentioned all three of them. Dofen akuma, what was dofen akuma? I'll start with the last one. It's the easiest one. What is dofen akuma? So if you remember, we said the overhang, right? What was the overhang, right? I've got the wall, not more than right? And then I've got uh, overhang. Right. As long as the four overhang is not four amot, right? What do I do? I don't consider it a ceiling which is disqualified, because remember, ceiling which is disqualified is a big problem, right? What I consider it is part of the wall. So therefore, I look at it as if that the wall goes up and then extends. That means even though it's a roof, no, it's, it's, a, it's a bent wall. What's an afkamina? A very important afkamina. In the majority of our houses, and when you do it outside, right, you attach the sukkah and you use the wall of the house as one of the walls. And then you have another two walls or three walls, whichever one that you want, yeah? Now you have the overhang. Women are allowed to sit underneath the overhang, or anybody which is right to, to is exempt from the sukkah could sit underneath the overhang because it's not part of the sukkah. But it doesn't disqualify the sukkah. Why doesn't it disqualify the sukkah? Because technically speaking, schach pasul, right? There's a difference between avir and schach pasul. But avir and schach pasul is either going to be the three tvachim or the four, but it's for sure not going to be four amot. Here you're able to have four amot of the ceiling kilo. But since I don't look at it as a ceiling, but I look at it as a wall, it doesn't disqualify. That's called dofen akuma. Second halacha, right? Lavud. So yesterday we mentioned, or it was two days ago we mentioned, if you remember, nowadays they have these sukkot, that they have the flappable, you know, like the, the walls are not, it's not a real wall. It's like a tela, it's material. Fabric. The fabrics. Now fabric, if it moves, right? Three tfachim within the air, but if it moves back and forth with the air, with the common air, it's pasul. Right? So what do you do? So they, what they invented was, a lot of people, they don't even know about this. Right? I know a lot of people, they didn't even know that they had to put the rope. Right? So they put, they it's it like a Velcro. Road. They sell it with the strap, but they don't even, they don't even know about it. They don't know that you're obligated to put it there. So they don't realize. What, yeah, people think to, to store it or whatever it is. They don't realize what it is. So what happens? So you put the Velcro, right, all around, and you tie it together. Now, every single Velcro is within three tvachim of each other. So you have from the floor to the first, 24, 24 centimeters, three tvachim. Yeah. yeah. So the floor to the first, right, Velcro, se- the first one to the second, second to third. Since each one is within three tvachim from each other, so therefore we say the word lavud. Lavud is basically that it's connected. We connect it together. The same thing would apply not only by those strings. Let's say even I wanted to make a regular wall of a sukkah, but I'm using these two by twos or whatever it is. So as long as I have the floor within three tvachim, three tvachim within the next three tvachim, within the or we just mentioned now in the halacha. If a person has to sit on the floor of Tisha B'Av, if he's going to sit on a stool or a bench which is less than three tvachim from the ground, so it's considered he's sitting on the ground. Why? Lavud. That is the concept of lavud. So the halacha la Moshe Misinai, according to Rabbi Mead, was not that a mechitza has to be ten tvachim. Because that we already learned from the Aaron and the Kaporet. The Aaron was nine tvachim. The Kaporet was one tefach. 10, that's it. What are we learning before? Number one, Dofen Akuma. Number two, Lavud. Number three, number three, we also learned yesterday, Gud Asik and Gud Achit. Gud Asik means I look at an imaginary wall going upwards. Asik, going upwards. Gud Nachit means I look at an, a majority, uh, an imaginary wall going downwards. Right? So yesterday, if you remember, we were talking about a case. It was yesterday or two days, I don't remember now. We, we had, it was yesterday, to do with the, the roof. And then we had the roof and people are putting the beams, the four beams. Okay, uh, now when they had the four beams, right? Then we looked as if that the roof of the, of the house, meaning the walls of the house were being projected upwards. That's called Buddha seat. Sometimes it could also be going downwards, which is good, good. yes. And then Ruvin also, right? They're going, right, downwards, right? And upwards, right? But it's usually brought down everywhere. We always, okay, Dofa Nakuma is usually by Sukkah more than anything else, but Lavud is brought down usually everywhere. Right? And also, and the good achit and good asi. Okay? So this is Allah Chalam Hashem Sinai that we just mentioned. By the two dots. So two dots, Vava Mubet. Two dots says, V'she'en la'ashalosh tevanot. So we already said that the sukkah has to have a minimum of, how many walls? Three walls. Yeah? So has to have, which one? So that's three walls. Three walls. Yeah? So Tanu Rabbanan, we learned in the right, Ashtayim Kilchatan, two walls have to be Two complete walls. Ushlishit is even going to be a tepach. So therefore, it says the Gimana, when it says three walls, and if it doesn't have three walls, it's not really three f- complete walls. It's two complete walls and one which is going to be 
a tefach. Rabbi Shimon Omer, Rabbi Shimon says, no, three complete walls, right? And the fourth one could even be a tefach. So ask the Gemara, Gemara, what is the machloke between the Chachamim and Rabbi Shimon? Why do you say that it's either two plus a tefach or three plus a tefach? What's going on? So Rabbanan Savar, the rabbis hold, yesh em la masoret. Ve Rabbi Shimon Savar, yesh em la mikra. Right, basically the rabbis hold that Yeshem Lamasore, which means the Ikara de Rasha, is the way that it's written in the Torah, which is the Masoret. The Masoret is, is the way that we write it. But then Rabbi Shimon says Yeshem Lamikra, the way that we read it. Lamikra is Kriya, the way that we read it, which means like this. Many times in the Torah, we have a word, right, that we read it one way and we write it a different way. Right? Many times. We just had in this past week's uh, Parasha when we said Vayu, right? And I think it was written Vaya, right? Vaya instead of Vayu. Yeah, so sometimes we have, right, certain words that, or who, he, he, who, you know, all these things, right? And, uh, you know, becomes problematic. So the Gemara is going to say it's the following. The rabbis hold, right, yesh em la masoret. What does that mean, yesh em la masoret? The way that it's written in the Torah. Now, it's written in the Torah, basukot, basukot, without avav. Lashon yachid. Okay, so therefore, and only in the third time, does it say basukot, teshu, basukot right. with a va? So therefore he says, hare kanarba, because you have basukot is singular. Basukot, singular. Basukot with a va, plural. So now that's four. Singular, singular is two. And then plural is two. Two plus two is four. Dalcha legufe, but you need one for itself. So therefore, pashut So now you have only what three. The fourth one, Rabbi, I don't see the fourth. One more time. Basukot is singular. So that's one. Okay. Basukot is singular. That's two. Basukot is plural, but it has a va. So that's also two. Oh, the, 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 which one? Why, has a vav. Because of the vav. Is because true. of the vav, it's, it's plural. Basukot with the vav makes a plural. So once it's plural, it's two. And now, be, one more time. It's written three times in the Torah, basukot. Twice singular. So therefore, it's two. Ah, single, single. Singular? Yes, without the vav, it's singular. With the vav, he's saying it means plural. So if it's with the plural, right? So now all of a sudden, you have two. So two plus two equals four. But you need one for the sukot itself. So if you have four minus one, it's three, right? Pashulu tzlata. So now you only have three. Shtayim kilchatan. So now we go back to the original rule. Two of them, like the halacha, v'atay alchata ugrat l'shishit. So you have two, which is halacha, which means that you need full walls. And one of them, right, is going to be, uh, the, uh, sorry, kilchatan v'atay alchata ugrat l'shishit is going to make it less v'ukma tefach. It's going to place it on a tefach. So that is the shita of, Rabbanan, Rabbi Shimon Savar, Rabbi Shimon holds, Yeshem la Mikra. What does it mean, Yeshem la Mikra? The Ikara de Rasha is al the way how you read it, not the way that it's written. So therefore, Basukot, Basukot, Basukot is six. Because even though it's written Sukkot, right? Sukkot David, Sukkot is singular. What's a Sukkot David? It's only one Sukkot. Sukkot, right? So but then there's without what? The vav? Without the Vav, it's said, singular. You, you Sukkot or Sukkot? Suk, Sukkot, but the way that we read it in the Torah, it's Sukkot, because that's the way that we read it. Okay. Yeshem la mikra. Okay. So now, how do you read it? Plural, even though it's singular. Okay. So therefore, according to this, how many do you have? If it's written three times, even though twice it's written singular and once plural, we pronounce it plural by all. So therefore, it's six. Two, four, six. Right? Because each time is the way that you read it. Right? So it's written six times then. Dal So you have one for itself. So now you have five. Oh, sorry, not one for itself. One, one basukot is for itself. So it's not just one reading. One of the sukkot, it's for itself. So you take one off. So now there's only four in left. Vav. What? No, but it's nothing to do with imbav or blivav. It's the way that you read it. You always read it, basukot. You always read it. No, no. It's written. One of them is written with a vav. Uh, sorry, two of them are written without a vav. And one of them is written with a vav. You have it in the Gemara. What do you mean? In the Gemara, it's written basukot, basukot. One more time. No, look, look, Aleph. Look at the little Aleph in the Gemara. No, nobody has it in the Gemara. I don't know. That's just the way that it's written in the Torah. Huh? In the. No, but you're allowed to have the Sukkah together. No, schach, no, the sukkah, yes. no, but they speak about that. But that's already in sukkah, sukkah yishena. 
מספיק ועדה לסוכה יש שם. Okay. That is uh, the, right. That's from the pasuk. Pasukot means all the Israel. Okay. No, but you don't see it in the Gemara. Right. One more time. One more time. No. One more time. One more time. Look in the pasuk. The pasuk says you have a little aleph there by the pasuk. The pasuk says basukot, basukot, basukot. The first two times in the Gemara where it's written basukot, it's without a vav. The third time it's written with a vav. Then when you come and you tell me now not that yesh em la masoret, which is the masoret, the tradition, the way that it was written, but rather yesh em la mikra, which is the way that it is read, okay? So now here it says, right? Yesh em la mikra, the way that it's read. So here we read it, basukot, 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 with vav each time. So then it's six. You have to take one of those basukot for itself. So now it's four. Okay? This is the way that Rabbi Shimon is learning. So therefore, shalosh is going to be la lacha, the halacha, the hilchata is going to come and take it away. They're just going to put it on the tefach. So that's the machloke between Rabbi Shimon and Chachamim. Until here, clear? Okay, Rabbi Shimon say. Vibayit Emar, if you want, you could explain the machloke between them in a different way. Techuli alma yeshem la mikra. Everybody holds. It depends how you read it. Ve'acha kamipalge. But here, what is the machloke between them? Mor savar tanakama holds sechacha bayakra. Right, which the schach itself needs a pasuk. One of them holds that the schach does not need a pasuk. What does that mean? The Tanakama holds that the schach itself also needs a pasuk. So it comes out that we only have three sukkot, right, to learn from them the amount of walls, right? And one of them holds the schach does not need the, the, the extra pasuk. So therefore, because it's not a sukkah without schach, right? So because of that, you still have four. So basically, like this. We know, right, that the schach, for us, the schach is the most important part of the sukkah, right? If there's nothing there, it's a problem, you understand? But what we're trying to learn here, though, is, is that does it need a pasuk or does it need a pasuk? The Tanakama holds that even the schach needs a pasuk in itself. So since you need a pasuk in itself, right, it comes out that you only have then three sukkot. If you only have three of the sukkot and not four, because one of them you also needed for the schach, so now you have three, so now you have to take away one, Right for the tefach, so you have two in one tefach, right? Like two, and the third one is a tefach, right? But according to the other opinion, which is the Shimon, the schach doesn't need a pasuk because that's the ikar of the sukkah, and therefore you still have four. So there, if you take one off, so it's three in one tefach, three walls and one tefach. Vibaytema, a third explanation of how do we explain the machloka between Tanakama, the Chachamim, and Rabbi Shimon. The chule alma yeshem la masoret, the opposite way around. According to everybody, we go the way that it's written in the Torah, in the Bible. Yeah, how's it written in the Torah? So it's written in the Torah, right? Basukot, 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 twice, singular without a vav, and once with a vav. So once a machloket then. The machloket is, what is the halachal Moshe Messinai coming to bring it? Is the halachal Moshe Messinai coming to make it less or making to make it more? If you say that it's coming to make it less, so you had, Three walls left, so the Alachal Moshe Sinai comes and takes that the third wall does not have to be a full wall, it could be a tefach. So I'm making it less. But if you're going to tell me that the Alachal Moshe Sinai is coming to add, so I already had three walls. So if I already have three walls, the Alachal Moshe Sinai is not making that the third wall becomes a tefach, it's adding on a tefach. So now it becomes three plus a tefach, not three, three, which becomes like minus, which becomes two plus a tefach. Yeah. Yeah, let's go, let's go, let's go. We write the fourth explanation. Fourth explanation. According to everybody, when the Alachal Moshe Mitzinai came, it was to make it less, which means that you wanted to make it smaller. But Yeshem Lamasoret, right? And we all, everybody also holds Yeshem Lamasoret. So again, we're now placing the Anacha, we're placing that according to everybody, Yeshem Lamasoret, which means we go according to the way that it's written. According to everybody, the Alachal Moshe Mitzinai was making it smaller, not adding. But here the machlok between them is, are we doresh at tehila? What does it mean exactly? The askara di shona, the first thing that is written. More savar doshin tehilot. According to more, he says that we are going to mention the first one. So it comes out that there's actually four sukkot, three kil chatan, and the fourth one, which is enough, a tefah, right? According to Allah Chalmashim Yisnai. Or more savar, the other one holds 
In Dorshim Tchilot, we don't have the make of the Rashan the first time that it was mentioned. So therefore, we only have three Sukkot. So since you only have three Sukkot, so therefore, it's only two Kil Chatan and one is going to be a Tefak. Basically, the first time that you mentioned something. Can you use that also to expound it or not? That's a machlok. Mm-hmm. According to one man, number, yes. According to one man, number, no. Right? So Rav Matana Amar. Rav Matana comes and he's going to bring another mekor to the Shittah of Rabbi Shimon. Tamad Rabbi Shimon mehacha. The reasoning of Shimon is like this. The sukkah tiel letzel yomam mechorev. The sukkah is going to be for tzel. Ul machsel misor minzerom mimatad. What does that mean? Here it's mashma that the sukkah has to be to mim again. It has to be a protection from water. Right? Now he says... If you don't have the fourth wall at all, so how's it going to protect you? The, the, the wind, is it, uh, you're, you're going to say the truth. What's more protected? Two full walls and a little tefach or three full walls and a tefach? Obviously, you're going to tell me that three full walls and a tefach protects much more, right, than obviously two walls and a tefach. So that's the reasoning according to him, right, of uh, Rav Matna, the reasoning of Rabbi Shimon. We're almost finished. It says, tepach echa mamido. So where does the tefach go? So it says, Amarav mamido you're going to do it, Kenega, that you'd say, what does that mean? In a Zavit Yeshara Lekzea Dolphin. It has to be Mamash right beside the Dolphin. Right? That means at the end of one of the Diffanot. Doesn't matter which one, but it has to be at the end of one of the Diffanot. So says the Gimana, that means, you right? Here you do have a picture. I'll show you a picture. The Otot of Mahal Mado, Amarab Mido Kenega, that you'd say. Right? So this is the Kenega, that you'd say. Right here. Okay. Okay, you have it here. Right there. Kinega da Yutse. Right here. Okay, right by it doesn't matter which one, but it has to be Kinega da Yutse. So he comes down and he says, That's Shitat Rashi. So Amalir of Kana Vravasi Lerav says of Kana Ravasi to Rav, the Amidenu, Zaina Mudala from the top, the Amidenu Kinega de Rostor. You're going to put it Kinega de Rostor. What does that mean? Right? It says, you're going to put the, the tefach in a pina the sukkah balachson opposite the two mechitzot shlemot. So for by doing that, the, the tefach is actually t- turning towards the two mechitzot and therefore it's going to become like four mechitzot. So here you have it. You see the picture? Yeah. That's a picture, right? So if you're going to put it right, it's going to be a sukkah psula, because basically you have to have it balachson. You have to have it right in an angle. It has to be inside, inside, inside an angle. It has to be right, angle line. Right. Okay, and then we continue tomorrow.